With the debut of Aptera Motors' production intent solar electric vehicle at CS 2025, we now have a lot more information about their solar package than we did before the unveiling. For instance, we now know exactly what the solar string layout is and how many cells are in each string. Although it was revealed that the solar hatch that was shown at CES was missing six planned solar cells due to the fact that it was laminated under plastic instead of the production glass. So the vehicle on display at CES had only 183 solar cells versus the 189 cells that will be on the production vehicle for a total of 703 installed watts of solar generating power. We also have some real-world power generation numbers thanks to a couple of ride-along videos from Aptera Owners Club and Jerry Rig Everything, showing full sun generation and full shade generation respectively. With all this new information, it seems like a good time to update the Aptera Solar Calculator for Blender with the latest specs and also calibrate it to the observed power output values. This exercise should make the calculator more accurate and get closer to validating Aptera's claim of up to 40 miles per day of solar range. If you recall from the first video about the Aptera Solar Calculator for Blender, the primary calculation was measuring the efficiency of each cell based on its inclination angle from the path of direct sun. Now that we know the string layout, version 2 of the calculator continues to measure this efficiency at the cell level, but evaluates each string independently and limits the output of the string by the worst performing cell in that string. The calculator interface also now displays the output of each string in watts, in addition to a single total power output value. Another important addition made to the calculation is factoring in ambient light conditions. This means that the worst performing cell in a string will never output less than what the ambient light will generate, even if the inclination angle is greater than 90%. This ambient light value is user-definable and is specified as a percent value of standard test conditions or peak output. In the real world, ambient light can change depending on various conditions like cloud cover or nearby reflective surfaces. Our goal is to choose an average value that gets us close to real-world conditions experienced throughout a typical day. But since this is user-definable, you can put in different values in order to simulate different conditions. As before, the overall system losses is a user-defined value expressed as a percent number. This number has not been provided by Aptera Motors, but we'll start with 14%, which is what the PV Watts calculator uses, and see if we can validate this by calibrating to the actual solar output numbers. We'll start with Aptera Owners Club ride-along video from CS Las Vegas. At 25 seconds into the video, you can see the vehicle parked in full sun in the parking lot of Bagelmania where they were doing test rides. And while still parked later into the video, we see that the Aptera was generating 238 watts of power. We can bring up this location in Google Maps and grab the latitude and longitude values for this location along with the compass direction that the vehicle was oriented, which looks to be pointing approximately northwest. Now let's plug those values into the solar calculator. Keep in mind that the production intent vehicle we are calibrating to here has six fewer solar cells than the production version will have. So this version of the calculator I'm using matches the 183 cells version we saw at CES. We'll start with the latitude and longitude values for this location. Next, we'll put in the date and time, which I believe was January 6th at around 11 a.m. We'll point the vehicle northwest on the compass to match what we saw in Google Maps. If you orient the viewport in Blender to match the scene in the video, you can see that the shadow from the vehicle in the video matches up closely with the shadow simulated in the calculator. I've already done several iterations for this location and determined that by using 14% system losses and 5% ambient light, which are both reasonable numbers, we can calculate exactly 238 watts of output to match the actual full sun output displayed in the video. If you recall from the earlier Aptera Solar Calculator video, the solar dash needs to be managed manually because it's the only panel that can be shaded by the body of the vehicle when the inclination is less than 90 degrees. So in this scenario, I'm not checking the include dash solar checkbox because the dash appears to be in partial shade, which means that the lowest performing cell would be an ambient light, limiting the output of the entire dash. The calculator will apply only an ambient light calculation to the dash solar when this checkbox is unchecked, 
assuming that it is in partial or complete shade. Now let's take a look at Jerry Rig Everything's video. At 7 minutes into the video Zach is pointing out that the Aptera is generating 29 watts in full shade as they exit Bagelmania. This ride-along was done a couple days later than the AOC video and later in the day, which is why there is full shade at this same location. In this simulation, we need to set the calculator parameters to where no direct sunlight hits the vehicle, so we'll pick an early time like 5 a.m. when the sun is below the horizon. This will force the calculation to drop to ambient light only for all strings. And you can see when using the same 14% system losses and 5% ambient light values the calculator comes up with 29 watts, exactly matching the video. Now that we've got relatively good values for overall system losses and ambient light conditions, let's switch to a version of the calculator that has the full 189 solar cells and we'll calculate a best case scenario in Las Vegas which would be during the summer solstice. We'll leave the latitude and longitude the same, but change the date to the 21st of June. I've found through experimentation that having the vehicle aligned east-west results in the best solar power numbers. So we'll change it here to point east. Starting the clock at 6 a.m., when the sun is just starting to rise over the horizon, we'll run through a complete daytime simulation. Turning on the dash solar once, it gets in full sun, with no shadows, and turning it off, when it goes back into partial shade. You can see that we calculate 4.42 kilowatt hours for the day, and assuming 10 miles per kilowatt hour, this is over 44 miles of range for the day. This is right on target with Aptera's claim of up to 40 miles per day. Keep in mind though that this would be on a clear day with no cloud cover. I recommend that you refer back to the earlier video on the Aptera Solar Calculator for Blender for a method to comprehend cloud cover for a location using the National Solar Radiation Database website. Let's try a simulation of Carlsbad, California where Aptera is based, and we will plug in the latitude and longitude values. Using the summer solstice date for the best case scenario and simulating a complete day, we come up with 4.43 kilowatt hours, just a fraction better than Las Vegas likely due to Carlsbad being somewhat farther south. In real-world conditions taking into account weather, Carlsbad would probably yield less annual power than Las Vegas due to more cloud cover throughout the year, again something that the National Solar Radiation Database would show. It will be interesting to see the results of Aptera's validation efforts of their solar power range compared to these results from the simulation. For now though, based on this simulation I believe we can expect to see positive results when they do their real-world testing over the next few months. If you want to try out the Aptera Solar Calculator for Blender and simulate your location for any date throughout the year, the updated version is available via the link in the video description below.